YouTube. Let's talk about this DeWalt DWE and portable job site table saw. I use this a lot in my shop because it's mobile, easy to set up, easy to transport. And I'm going to go over some dimensions of this thing when it's set up and then the dimensions when it's in what I consider cart mode. Okay, let's go over some of these dimensions here. From the back leg here coming forward to this leg, it's about 40 and a half inches. Going across the front from the widest part of the legs here, it's 39 and a half inches. And the tabletop is approximately 36 and a half inches. The widest part of the saw from front to back, not counting the legs, just the saw, is about 28 inches. And the saw weighs, with the cart and everything, 94 pounds. Okay, so when it's in cart mode like this where you can transport it, once again, the widest part from this knob to an area over here where there's a latch for the fence, the way it connects, it's about 28 inches. The wheelbase is about 26 inches and the cart stands approximately four feet tall. All right, let's go over some general setup here. The legs here, the, the upper part of the legs, you simply push the pins in, just take your hands, put your thumbs on the inside, squeeze, send the legs out. These pins down here that hold these legs in place, they're designed so you can kind of kick them with your foot so they either go forwards or backwards. You don't have to push them in. So you simply just pull them to you, flip the legs out, and you hear them click in the spot. So I like to put one foot on the, the wheel axle bar and tilt it down and get good positive connection with the rubber feet on the legs. And once I do that, just give it a little yank. And boom, you're all set up. Okay, so how do we get this saw ready to do some ripping? This was one of the things that when I first started using it was a little bit tricky for me. Uh, and that's to get the fence from the storage area to the... Uh, the tabs here to lock it on and then actually putting it back would be the more tricky part for me. But what I like to do when I store it is this metal guide rod here. You keep the marker on about nine and a half inches and it'll align this pin that you have to connect the fence to it about the exact right place. So you flip the two tabs out, it drops down, you pull your fence out, you come over here, you've got a first knob and a second knob. I'm gonna use the second knob. Simply just drop it in, slide it under, let it rest down, click it in, and you're ready to go. There's a knob right here that locks and unlocks the track, so you can either adjust the fence or not adjust the fence, depending on where the lever is. So by clicking the lever up, now it gives me the ability to turn the knob and move it to wherever I want to go. In the, in the first position, you've got out to 24 inches maybe even 25 inches, but the, the numbers stop at 24 inches. So from the blade here, you can do a 24 inch width. Now, if you take this and you pop the levers back open, move this back, put it on the second set of tabs, click it down. Now you're at approximately a 32 inch rip width on your saw. And then simply just dialing it in. It moves really nicely. And you use this to lock it in place and it holds really well. So once again, flip the tabs, tilt it up, pull it back, slide it, let it, you can see how these, that's how those things are that lock underneath the tabs. And these are the levers that I'm flipping right here. So just slide it under them, let it rest, flip the tabs down, you're locked in, you're ready to go. Click this lever to the up position. Just set it to whatever you need it to be set at. Push it down to lock it. This is your blade height adjustment. Clockwise is up, counterclockwise is down. And if you take this lever here and pull it towards you, then it's gonna allow you to swing the blade and tilt your blade for a bevel cut. Some other features of this table saw is right here is a um, holder for your miter gauge. Pull that out, stays very secure, it won't fall out. 
right beside the miter gauge on top right here are the two wrenches so if you need to change your blade and here's the power cord over here on this side you simply just twist a, uh, a knob and you can slide off the blade guard that also has the anti-kickback paws and on the back side of your miter fence is a push stick this is a uh, dust port adapter that I put on so I can plug in my um, dust port hose. When I first got this saw, one of the things that was the most aggravating was putting it back into storage mode and getting this where it needs to go. So I'm going to show you how I do that now and do it fairly effectively. So on the front side of the saw, on the right hand side, there's the lever that I showed earlier in the video. You click into the up position, put your gauge your measuring gauge on the top line that's the yellow line put it at about nine and a half and lock it down and that'll make sure that this metal track is in about the right position so you can get your fence underneath here because if this thing's not in the right position it's going to make your fence really aggravating to try to store it underneath the saw for storage so when you remove this you come here and you're going to turn it upside down so it was on the saw this way so you're gonna flip it upside down. You're gonna go underneath the saw. So yeah, I did that because it'll take. So just kind of scoop it down. Now raise it up. Make sure that these tabs here on each side of the metal rail hook them over the, the pins. Pull it up. Lock it into place. Leave it just like that. Now it's ready for storage. So now you're ready to break it down. Okay, let's break this saw down and get it ready for transport. So you simply grab the handle here, lift it up slowly. I like to stabilize the saw with my foot on the uh, axle bar here. And it's pretty simple. Just bend down, push, take your thumbs, push these down, slide your, your legs up. And then on the top ones, you have to push the pins in. They don't go down or up. You have to slip, simply push them in. Rotate them down, they click. Now you're ready to move the saw around. Another thing to consider when you're buying one of these job site portable table saws is how much work room do you have when it comes to cross cutting? So with the table being smaller, obviously, when you're using your cross cut guide or your miter gauge, Ideally, you want the entire miter gauge, or at least most of it, to be sitting on the saw, which gives it stability. So if you do this and put it where about where the, the, the most far back position you can be, and you measure up to where the workpiece will come in contact with the blade, it gives you somewhere around an 8-inch depth. So that means basically an 8-inch piece can be here. So if you've got a 12-inch wide, whatever it is, you, know, you don't want to slide your miter saw gauge back here like this because it's just not going to feel stable. Using a cross-cut sled, building one of those for this saw or any of these smaller type saws can greatly increase the functionality of the saw, which I made one for this and it works really well. I really enjoy using this little DeWalt table saw. It's worked well for me in all the applications that I've put it through. And I've used it enough to put it through its paces and check what I would consider just about everything as far as functionality that this table saw can do. And I can't think of a single issue or circumstance where you know oh well if you put the fence in this general area it doesn't hold right or work right it's just it hasn't happened i think for the money that this saw is it's very good quality and it will give you good results